All right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you are new here. I'm Christina, aka the Variety Nerd, and today we are back with our weekly NXT UK reaction video. This week we've got not one, but two championship matches. We've got the NXT UK Women's Championship match, and we've also got the NXT UK Tag Team titles on the line as well. So as per usual, grab your snacks, grab your choice of beverage, get comfy and cozy, Make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below, and let's go ahead and react to this week's NXT UK, shall we? I think so. Oh man, they're like right out of the gate. I'm here for this. Seriously, we were like not even two minutes into the show and it's like, all right, match up. Cool. And this week's episode is a little bit longer than usual, which is quite nice. It's clocked in at an hour and 10 minutes, so I'm cool with that too. Especially if that means that we get more time on these title matches, because I'm really interested, like with this match right now, I'm interested to see what Stevie Turner can do more, because we've seen her in a couple of matches, but they weren't like super long or anything. So it'll be interesting to see what she can really do in this sort of a high stakes title match and that sort of thing. Well, there's always stakes with the title because I don't know, a championship's on the line. I do wonder when NXT UK is going to bring back crowds but given the state of the world right now, I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon. Oh man, we're like right into the ropes right away. I'm here for this. Oh, what a takedown for Mako. That was certainly quite a unique hold that we just saw. And my arm hurts just watching this. I mean, Mako's had a little bit more offense right from the get-go, but I still think it's still fairly even-ish. Like, does that make any sense? Because there hasn't been anything of super high impact yet on either side. Certainly a solid series of boots right there from Stevie Turner. Oh, oh my God. She just grabbed onto the leg right from that aerial move. I don't know what I just saw, but that was quite cool for Mako Satomura. She's, she's freaking fantastic. Where is this going? Oh God, right into the apron. Okay, but this is quite smart. Like Stevie Turner is just using her surroundings to her advantage. I was really confused just now when the referee held up five fingers and I thought he said nine instead of five. Honestly, this has been a good back and forth opening matchup right here. Oh, that was barely a two count though. I'm in pain watching this submission hold, but certainly an interesting way to end things off and I'm here for that. It was a different ending. So yeah, that first matchup was quite good. It was very much back and forth. Everybody looked great in the matchup and it was the right length, the right person won. It was competitive and I can't say anything bad about that match. Oh boy, wh when are we getting this match? See, I like how they actually give these matches in NXT UK like time to breathe a little bit. It's basically Rampage Brown and Joe Coffey. They've been at this since I think February from what they were saying. So we need to get a tiebreaker. Submission or knockout match. That's quite interesting. I would not want to mess with either one of these two dudes. <laughs> we're going to have a match where two people are just going to beat the crap out of each other and I am all for it. Ah, uh, yes, we have Eddie Dennis and company here. It's like, I know who the other two dudes are. I know who they are. I just find it, it flows better. <laughs> basically, Saxon Huxley basically just kind of got into Eddie Dennis's bubble. And so that's how we got to this matchup right here. That That's definitely fair. You want to set a good example for the rest of your team. All right, that's something I can get on board with. That's a good motive right there. I, I get the impression that this matchup isn't going to last too long but I could be super duper wrong. Oh, it's okay. Everybody's taller than me. So, I mean, there's that. <laughs> All right, now we're on to the outside of the ring. I mean, I I'm kind of low key rooting for Eddie Dennis here, but of course, whenever we start saying that we're gonna root for somebody, they typically lose around here. <laughs> Man, I wish I had the energy to read two books a week. I mean, given how school's going, it certainly feels like I'm reading two books a week. That would certainly send someone reeling. Wait, a size what boot? Okay, I, I, my brain was like thinking 60 instead of 16, but even then 16? <laughs> referee is not having any of it. You got some good air on that power bomb or whatever that was just there. You got some good air on it. Well, this was certainly an interesting ending to say the least. I wonder where this is gonna go next. Like, is anybody gonna go and like help out Saxon Huxley or what's going on here? See, maybe that car is going. <laughs> like, yes, you can totally drive a car across the Atlantic. All right, this should be an interesting matchup as well. So as we also remember from last week, sort of in a similar artery, uh, Isla Dom was just kind of creeping in the background of an interview that Danny Luna and I believe Mark Andrews had. A joint interview type of thing. They were kind of talking about 
Flash Morgan Webster's loss in his match last week. And yeah, so that's how we got to this matchup. Honestly, I quite like both of them, but I kind of want Danny Luna to win at this point. I mean, Subculture needs a win at some point, somewhere, because they lost both their matches last week. And not to mention, we get multiple women's matches in one night. So that's always a bonus in my book. And by multiple women's matches in one night, I mean like two different women's matches with two different dynamics and that sort of thing. With all different people. Yeah, uh, Danny Lou has got this. Uh, that's what I'm trying to figure out. What has been going on with Isla Dawn? Although I will say this, it's like one of the more interesting characters, like just because I want to know what happens every week. They keep mentioning how like Isla Dawn is taking souls and stuff. And I'm just like, is this an episode of Supernatural? What what's going on here? Do we get a spinoff series or crossover that we don't know about yet? Certainly better than that stupid American Horror Story spinoff. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go with that. We'll talk about that in a, in a separate thing. Looks like Danny Luna's trying to get some momentum here. Oh my god, she's not letting go. Oh, 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 nope, nope, not it. Not right there. Oh, I don't know what that was just there, but that was quite cool from Isla Dawn. She's been quite impressive too in this match. It's been a good match, I can't complain. Certainly a solid way to get her away from the ropes. Oh, it looked like Isla Dawn kind of got out of that suplex possibly that Danny Luna was going for and kicked her, I think. Wait, what? She actually pulled out some of Danny Luna's hair right there. I'd be ticked too! Minus the ending, I thought it was a good match, so there's that. But at least, like, it wasn't, like, out of nowhere it added in with Isla Dawn's, like, kind of creepy, witchy kind of character, right? So, I mean, at least that part made sense, but yeah, overall, decent match, can't complain, except for maybe the ending, but I think the right person certainly won in this case. Basically, it kind of came down to this where it was like, oh yeah, you can't be the tag team champions unless if you beat Mustache Mountain. I feel like that is a fairly valid claim right there, to say the least. And so that is indeed how we got to this matchup right here. Plus, Mustache Mountain has kind of been on a roll with, you know, being a tag team and so forth. So there is that. There's also a number one contenders tournament to determine Tyler Bates' next challenger for the Heritage Cup, which we better freaking get in the new game or I swear I'm going to go and freaking learn how to program it myself <laughs> says the one that nearly failed programming one in undergrad these are just objectively terrible mustaches i would know i live in a city where they're plastered everywhere many of them are also fake some people just should not grow any sort of facial hair and i think pretty deadly is the textbook example right here i like them as a team but th these stashes gotta go the true battle of the stashes <laughs> This, this looks like some nonsense that you would just toss onto your created wrestler in 2K20. These are just objectively terrible mustaches. How, do they even grow naturally that way? I don't think they do. I don't know anything about mustaches other than that they can be cool, but still. These are uncool stashes versus the cool stashes. This is kind of like Among Us, where it's like, who's the imposter stash <laughs> among the actual stashes? <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Come on, we need Tyler Two belts to happen, and Trent needs a title too. We still haven't had anyone, as far as I know, win both the NXT and NXT UK tag titles, right? Oh, we got some good air on that move. Just, just chop the stash off of him. Whether you love him or hate him, at least pretty deadly. You can at least guarantee that they're gonna be as smooth as butter, just because of their tag team chemistry. Oh, double knee right there. What, uh, sir, what are you doing? They just get the sneakiest tags possible, Pretty Deadly does. Okay, are the stashes finally gone? Because I really freaking hope so. Oh, yep, there there we go. Okay, so the referee just totally saw the Pretty Deadly just double team Tyler Bate outside the ring, but he's like, as soon as Trent's in the picture, he's just like, oh no, nobody fighting, no, no double teaming or anything like that. It's like... Sir, uh, you're supposed to be an impartial referee here. <laughs> Tyler Bate is so quick. You know, it's kind of like, it's on one hand, like the first couple of times, it's like, okay, sneaky tags are cool. But then it's like, then it's just like, it kind of gets a little overdone after a bit. I don't know. Like, I don't know who Pretty Deadly would go after, after Mustache Mountain. You know what I mean? Like, who would be challenging them after that? So, I mean, based on that, I don't know. Maybe we're going to get some shenanigans in this match. Oh, bit of a... Middle of the ring collision there. I truly need like half of Tyler Bates' energy right now. He's like, I'm ready to go, even though I just got the crap beat out of me not too long ago. <laughs> Tagged him in by just like kind of just tapping him on the face right there. 
Oh my god, they might actually have it. They might actually have it. Oh my god. You're you're kidding me, right? That would have been a great ending right there. I wouldn't complain one bit. Oh my god, that clothesline had like no chill whatsoever. Okay, what what was that? I, I don't think they got all of that. Where's Tyler Bate at? I don't think he should be out for that long, right? Okay, there's Tyler. Oh my god, please win. <laughs> and Trent goes flying. How was that not the ending? That's what I'm- how are these two kicking out when they already have to do 10,000 sneaky tags in a match? I'm enjoying the match, I just have a lot of questions. But to be fair, we always ask a lot of questions around here. Teamwork makes the dream work. Oh my god. What? I told you shenanigans! We're gonna be getting a rematch. See, why couldn't the referee just watch the replay back? Overall, this was a good match though, except like the very ending. But that's just me personally. I thought there was just way too much going on at the end. But yeah. Otherwise, I was cool with the match. I quite enjoyed it. All right, so final thoughts on this week's NXT UK. I quite enjoyed it from top to bottom. I would definitely recommend going out of your way for both the championship matches. I've got a lot of reactions coming up in general. We'll be doing SmackDown tomorrow night, slash probably by this is by the time this is uploaded tonight on Friday. We'll be doing AEW Rampage. They have their first special episode called The First Dance, and it's going to be live from Chicago. Then we've got SummerSlam on Saturday, which is actually quite refreshing for once when we get a Saturday pay-per-view. And then on Sunday, we've got TakeOver 36. And then, of course, next week, we've got our weekly reactions with NXT and NXT UK. So within the next week, we've got like seven total reactions coming up. So... That's what to expect here on the channel, and then some. So we've got plenty of cool content coming up your way. So, on that note, thank you all so much for tuning in. Leave a like, leave a comment down below. What'd you all think of this week's NXT UK? And I will see you all around later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>